Hello, and welcome to Making Mannequin Heads into Planters! Huzzah! Hi. How's it going? Um, welcome to this episode, and I hope you're doing well. It, I'm not sure what episode this is at this point, um, but I know that it's going to be a fabulous one! Um, so anyway, uh, I had a wonderful... Um, little dinner with friends and we sat outside in their outside space that has a fireplace like actual fireplace it's really cool it's an inside outside area so that was nice um, but anyway so how much fun is this um, I am thrilled with what we did last session our last episode <laughs> session <laughs> it's like I'm having yeah never mind I was thinking, it's like, oh yes, I'm having a psychological evaluation or last session. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm in a super extra wacky mood today. Uh, so I'm just very excited. We're going to continue using Sculptcrete. Got to love it, got to love it, got to love it. So I'm just gonna clean this out a little bit more and then clean it out quite a bit before I saw you. Just going to get the rest of the glue out the bottom. So, word to the wise, keep cleaning out immediately after doing it. Like I mentioned last time, I don't, you know, I don't want to have to constantly be finding new things to mix my salt feed in. So, clean it out. Reuse, recycle, wherever we can. This is a good place for it. Um, saves money. Keeps me from buying things to put in. And doesn't go into a landfill, or at least it's delayed for going into a landfill. There, all set. So I'm going to do a little bit of mixy, mixy, mixy here. So let's look at what I've done so far. This guy is awesome. I finished the inside he's not quite there it is that's a good shot let's do this there we go so i filled him fully with sculpted inside the bottom is done i am going to in this episode put it on the bottom here because i do like having it all the way around and then i'm going to do the inside of this one she came out really freaking cool. Look at this, people. How cool is that? Right? Comes up to the ear on both sides, beyond it, through there. Really, really, really cool. I'm thrilled with it. So that was very, very cool from the last episode. Um, it's holding up very well. It actually adhered very well. It's not quite fully dried on in places but it'll finish up drying, it's far enough. The ears came out really well. I like the ears, they're fun. Um, I could have made them pointed if I want. I can always actually, at this point, if I wanted to make them pointed or make them do a flare type of thing, I could totally do that, um, which I'm very tempted to do, actually. Um, so we'll see, we will see, we will see what we're going to do. But I'm going to do the inside here. So what I've got to be careful about is not making it so the holes will not drain. This top hole, which is the throat hole, for lack of a better word, is blocked. Boom, blocked, can't see through it. See, dark space, don't want that. So we gotta make sure that as we go through that, we pop that hole back open. So take the screwdriver, jam it up underneath the chin. There we go, grind it right in there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Make sure that that hole, there we go, is nice and clear. Because we do want good drainage. Empty it out, a big old chunk that just came out. Good. Um, now, let's mix some Sculptrate. I'm going to do about half of what I did last time. I really wanted to get good coverage and be able to build as much as I wanted to. And I'm gonna focus, I don't know if I'm gonna do the bottoms and the top. I think I'm just gonna focus on this one for right now. And um, this one, I'm going to want to do the bottom as well, because it's just foam at this point. I don't want that. 
the foam is going to, you know, if I'm putting it on a surface, it's soft. So I don't want that to happen, but I do want the inside to be done, the bottom and the face. So let's do this time around. I wonder, let's try, how can I mount this so that when it's drying, oh, I worry about that falling off. I could always put it on its side. I could put it on its side while it's drying. So these are all things to learn as we go along. Get rid of one chunk there. It's loose, uh-oh, it's got a loose piece. Of course, I just made it a loose piece. There we go, that's better. Ear lobe was trying to grow onto the head. All right, so we got three to one of three dry measures to one wet measure. So I'm gonna do three shorties of this. Although, you know what I could do? Hey, 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 let's do this. I bet you I could pretty much figure out that if I'm doing threes, I could do a line here, a line about the length of my finger there, be about the same amount so i've got it so i'm gonna make one container for all three ha there we go so this end joint of my end section of my finger i'm gonna put a line there this is how we do it in a scientific measurement it's not scientific uh so we got this going i'm gonna put a new line here to remind myself of where oh my gosh there's so much sculpture down here that it Marker doesn't want to work, but it's okay. I'm getting the gist of it, right? That's what we need. There we go. So that'll remind me of that one. Next measure that I want to do is going to be, let's see if I can get this to reactivate a little bit, clean off the tip. There we go. Next measurement I want to be is about that same distance. It tapers in, it tapers down. So I'm thinking it's going to be about the same if I go to here. Draw my line around on this. I just keep my pin in the same place. Rotate the cup. I should get a better line since I don't really have any guidelines. Ah, oh, and look at that up. Matches right up. You love that or what? So I'm just holding the pen where it's at. Got my hand stabilized on the table. Holding the pen where it's at. Turn the vessel. <laughs> Turn the cup which is obviously the bottom of a bottle. It's kind of like I could use one of these, which is a um, sparkling ice. Nom nom, good stuff. This would actually be a great measure for that sort of thing because it's smaller. So you could do thirds or whatever you want to do. So the reason I'm doing this, can you figure it out? So I'm going to do there and then I'm going to do another fingers width and that tapers about the same for each of those. So that's gonna be here. Do that again. Actually, I've got a natural line because that's how high the water was before. And that's gonna be, ooh, that's a little bit too long. Let's go a little bit lower than that. There we go. So technical, right? Not. But, so that way in one container, I can do a three to one measure. So if I do two of these, this high, I would do, you, you do the math, you know what it is. I don't know what it is. So that'd be three if I did six and then a, a three to one measure would be two of the ones. I do two fulls, two ones. Because if I do one full, I do one of the short. Ha ha, there we go. Brilliant. So I wanna make sure I indicate so I've told you before, how do you get, oh, I don't know if I've actually told you, I've told other people. So when you have, here's a tangent for you, but I'm working with a permanent marker right now because there's so much crap on the outside. It is not actually marking, but it is doing what I want it to do. When you have permanent marker, what's a good way to get rid of permanent marker on something? There's a couple ways. A rubbing alcohol will usually take care of it and get rid of it. Well, these are alcohol based. I think they're called, I think it's a permanent marker by Sharpie, right? Uh, one end has a fine point. The other end, I believe the, the other end has a, oh no, this is just a fine point. Some of them have dual points, stuff like that. So this is a Sharpie. And if I want to get rid of marker, 
What can I do to do that? And it's not working with rubbing alcohol. You can use, if you don't have rubbing alcohol sitting around. Well, nowadays I tend to have a lot of hand sanitizer sitting around. Hand sanitizer, as long as it's alcohol based, will also work. Right? Did you think of that? I bet you didn't. Um, so I thought of that at work because I didn't have rubbing alcohol sitting around and I needed to get some Sharpie off of uh, a thumb drive, actually, oddly enough, um, in order to get the name of the person off it so I could reuse it. Um, so another way to do it is, so you got rubbing alcohol, you got hand sanitizer, and you've got a Sharpie. Take a Sharpie, go over the line, your previous line, like I just did, and like magic, that line is pretty much gone. The alcohol that's in the marker re-wets or re-dissolves the ink that's going on um, to the actual, or that's already on there. This only works with like harder surfaces. It does not work with paper, obviously, because all you're gonna do is, be, well, I mean, it would get rid of the line, but it's not gonna get rid of the alcohol or of the, um, the marker itself. But on a hard surface, like plastic or something like that, or even metal, go over it again, tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick, and what it'll do is then you can wipe it away. So um, hand sanitizer doesn't work as well as just straight up alcohol, but if it's been on for a long time, it'll leave a stain. So you go over with a marker, then hit it with the rubbing alcohol or the hand sanitizer, bingo, bango, it'll be almost completely gone. So you are welcome. Alrighty, so that's done. So I'm gonna do a full measure of this cup to here, to my top line, because then I'm gonna take That'll be one, two, three version of it, right? One, two, three. So then my water is just gonna come up to here. So it's gonna be a small batch. So let's get this going. All right. Oh, and that's pretty good. Look at that, right on the first try, right up to my three measure. And I'm gonna pop that in there and I'm going to not breathe in the fumes that are chemical reaction, don't want to set my lungs up with cement. Because Sculptcrete works like clay, hardens like concrete. Sculptcrete. Oh, that's kind of cool. My neck cracked when I did that. That felt good. Alrighty, so there's that. I'm going to use my water from my spray bottle because I'm getting low down here and I have a dead critter in it, which is always such a pleasant thing. I'm going to make sure I only go up to my mark. There we go. I'm up to my lowest mark, which is the first sort of ridge bulb. This is actually a great measuring tube because it's like ridge bulb, ridge bulge, ridge on the bulge, lowest point, and then equal distance from there to here. Seems to work for me. It's a good amount. And what is the rule with mixing anything that's like this? How much water do you put in? A little bit less than is normally called for. Why? Because you can't take away water, you but you can add water, right? Good rule, good rule of thumb. I mean, you can always, you can add more powder. Yes, you can, I know, I know. But instead of going back and forth and back and forth, just add a little bit less water. Not the end of the world if you add too much water and it's too goopy, just add more powder. But instead of doing that back and forth, add a little bit less water so you can add more later. So this is gonna to come together. At first it feels, it. so just the sensation to describe it to you, it doesn't feel like it's gonna to come together. It feels like they're just sort of missing one another. The powder is missing the water. And then suddenly, bingo bango, it happens. It's like magic. So, it's a small batch. I am going to want it wetter than this, but this is good. Like, this is a true clay like uh, consistency. This is nice clay or cement like consistency, if you will. Uh, it's a good consistency. A little bit dry, malleable. If I really wanted to build, I would probably want it just a tad wetter. I'm going to go a little bit wetter. Draw from my gross water. And there we go, just a little teeny bit more. Consolidate stuff on my workbench so I'm a little more comfortable with the amount of space that I have to work on. 
So for many, many, many years, I didn't have a dedicated workspace. I, well, I did. It's not true. For many, many years, I've had a dedicated workspace because I've really sort of forced it upon Lee, my husband, uh, in all of our houses, because he's an artist as well. So I was like, let's have at least a room. It can be a multi-purpose, multi-function room, but let's have a table that's like our, our arts table and uh, you know, a place where I can set up a sewing machine. Now the thing is, you know, we used it for sewing machine. I'd then break down my sewing machine, put it on the floor. Then I'd bring the back sewing machine back and do it when I'd be making my bags or when I'd be tailoring or anything like that. All right, let's take this out of here. What's nice is that like our last house in Kansas City, I had a dedicated sewing room. Oh, that was so nice. It was this um, like walk-in closet-ish, studio-ish, room up on the top floor of our five one half story tall house and uh cool 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 house uh in the southern part of kansas city all the way out by um at the very southern edge of kansas city missouri and no i never lived in kansas i always lived in missouri i did not live in kansas i lived in missouri i never did live in kansas um kansas city yes but that does not mean i lived in kansas it's one of those pet peeves. Um, so anyway, so I had a dedicated sewing room that was so cool because I had shelves. I lined the, the walls with shelves, put them up, you know, with those modular shelves where you can change the height and all that stuff. And boy, was that nice. I could just leave all my stuff. I made a ton of bags when I was in there. Um, it was actually featured in an article because I was doing a lot of crochet and, uh, and um, work with yarn and stuff like that as well and incorporating that into different bag styles. And was in one of those, um, one of the Kansas City magazines for that, which was really cool. But so in the new space, we, I um, just got, or I'm going to be getting on Sunday, I'm going to be picking up a potter's wheel. Hallelujah! Uh, so we, because the three of us are now throwing pottery, and Lee's been doing it for years, and he's a really good potter. And I've always wanted to get him a wheel, so I had an opportunity of somebody who had a uh, used wheel. There we go. This is great shape. I know. I'm just going to leave it out here, and let's get going with this. Um, yeah, so somebody was getting rid of their wheel because they are an art teacher and they just don't do it that much anymore, and she hasn't used it for a while, and she was like, well, and she has a kiln that she's never used that she got a couple of years ago that she got a great price for it, but was never able to use it because she didn't have a space for it. And so on Sunday, uh, we are going to go, oh crap, I didn't know I it. This is what happens when my mouth goes and my brown my brain doesn't. So I've got to wet it because it sticks to the other surface much better, as I've told you every single time. Um, it really does actually work together nicer. Um, yeah, so we're going to get a kiln and it's got a slab rolling table, which means that you can do slab clay work. I've been looking into low fire, low temperature, low fire, what they call low fire clay. Um, and doing creating our own kiln, doing an outside kiln, and also asking around to see if there's anybody who has kiln a kiln in the area who would be willing to fire outside pieces, do a full fire, um, you know, bisque fire, and then a and then a final firing of um, our pieces if we get a bunch of pieces together and then want to do a couple firings. So I'm very excited to be able to create sort of a next phase, next level of pottery. Um, since we have a space in this new house that is fully dedicated to art in this basement space that's being finished, I'm just really, 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 really appreciative to have this space. It's a huge, huge important thing in my world to be able to have time that instead of sitting and watching TV, which I try not to do very much of, just because it just, for me, I feel like I get antsy and I just want to do stuff. I want to create. Creating for me is much more interesting than watching somebody else's creations a lot of times. Um, so it could be practicing voice, it could be practicing accordion or whatever other instrument I'm into at the time um, that I'm playing or that I need to you know, practice for anything that I'm playing or singing on, and then, um, or being down creating, and it's been fun sharing. Ooh, 
That was a big old chunk of wet stuff that I don't want to waste. Where did you go? It disappeared. How does that happen? You drop something on a floor that's directly in front of you, underneath your feet, and oh, there it is, and it magically blends in immediately like, like it's trying to hide from you. Yeah, so anyway, so I'm very excited to be able to have not only this dedicated space, but be able to use it. I will be, once we get um, things set up down here a little bit further, I have a loom, I have a rigid heddle loom that I also very much enjoy using. Um, so the guy suggested, so I need to um, have my sewing machine set up. It's gonna be on this space and I, there will be a series of videos uh, when I'm going to be recovering or actually just covering and re uh, padding our dining room chairs when we have our when our kitchen is done because we're going to have a dining room table in our kitchen area which right now is two separate areas it's going to be the wall is going to be taken down in between so in doing that removal of the wall we are still going to have a dining room large expandable dining room table so that all the family can sit at it during holidays and we are going to need the cushions recovered and i have this fabulous mid-century modern fabric ish it's kind of like a uh it's a nice weight fabric that i got it restore which i love so it's um a nice fabric that i got for a great price so it doesn't go into the landfill which i love and restore habitat for humanity made some money off of which i absolutely love and um so I will do videos of that process. I will do them unedited again. So you can see the foibles that I go through and the learning process along the way. And you can join me with that and um, hopefully enjoy watching that. All right, so inside is all cemented up. Now I wanna work on her face a little bit and um, I'm gonna spend just a little bit of time on the next phase of this. So let's get some worked in here. Uh, sculpt Crete. What do I want to do? I want, so she's got nice ears or he's got nice ears. I don't know who it is. So I like the jawline the way it is. It's a nice soft jawline. I'm going to maybe bring the nose wider, wider through here. The entire nose is going to be. Oops. Come on, Patrick. Bucky, Bucky, Bucky. Buckaroo. There we go. Here we go. That's better. So I want that little divot to still be there. I want to widen the nose. And not. And I want it to be a beautiful wider nose. There we go. And give it some more character by letting it come very further out on the face because it was very 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 narrow like very minimal because i think it was just sort of to give a hint of what the there we go what the space was supposed to or what the you know facial features were supposed to be Whereas I want it to actually have facial features. There we go. Has broad, broader nose through here. There she blows. Very, very good. Do, do, do. Get it all blended together. All right, so as we go, I was thinking about, you know, what I could share with you today. And I'm excited that a friend of mine who, um, ooh, there we go, is a fabulous pianist. She's semi-retired from one of the synagogues where I was singing a lot, or not a lot, but frequently, regularly, I should say. Uh, she is doing some other stuff, which I'm very excited about. She's actually been the music director at a church as well for many years. And she asked me to come in and sing on 
uh, services this year for like Christmas and Advent and stuff like that. So it's nice to have gigs for singing. Let me tell you, it's tough when you tough to keep the motivation of all the practice and everything when if you don't have like a goal, obviously, right? If you don't if you don't have like a venue that you're going to be singing in, it becomes difficult. Ooh, that's pretty cool to stay really motivated vocally, musically, or in anything, unless, you know, if you're doing sculpture, then why are you doing it? If you don't have any place or anyone who's going to want to look at it or a venue for it to be displayed other than yourself. Some people, they're super happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that. Just, or if you're doing it just for the sake of learning is awesome. But sometimes you want a little bit different or other than that. And for me, performing obviously is been doing it for so long that uh, having the ability to actually perform, perform uh, and present in public is a whole different experience than singing in my studio. <laughs> um, nothing wrong with singing in my studio. I absolutely love it. But I put a little ball on the end. All right. A little too much of a ball on the end. There we go. I'm gonna build that up nicely. There we go. And it's nice and damp, so it's easy to work with. Yeah, so I'll be doing that coming up. I'm not sure exactly how many days, but as much as I can for singing coming up. Very excited. Um, you know, you're probably like, all right, Jewish guy singing in a church. What's the deal with that? Well, I've always sung at churches. Um, <laughs> for a while, and please don't get offended by what I'm about to say, but it just sort of is one of those things. Uh, hopefully you know at this point not to be offended by anything on essay, because uh, that is your stuff, not mine. Um, so I, for a long time, and it was, it was tongue in cheek that I would say this, but people would be like, oh, so what religion are you? And I was not a religion for a long time, um, not practicing anything or observing anything, if you will. There, it's kind of a turny up your nose. It's a little weird. I think I want the nostrils to go back and up more. Oh, that's better. Back and up more. I should really be using a, oh, that actually kind of works nicely and weirdly. Um, let's bring the folds down further so that there's actual space up in them. Yeah, so my answer would be, um, yeah, whichever one pays me the most. It's a typical singer answer. <laughs> Um, because it, it was that, I mean, it was like, well, if you pay me, I will go and lead your services. Um, but you have to pay me enough because this is not like, you know, an avocation. This is a, um, or, you know, it's not a, like a, a hobby. I have worked my butt off for, for basically my entire life to get to the point where I can do what I do. Um, the amount of work that I put into it. And it's kind of like asking a doctor, hey, would you do surgery on me but not charge me because, you know, you like doing what you do. I get that all the time. Oh, would you sing on this? But I can't pay you. I'm like, um, excuse me, if it's for charity, I'll do it. But how do you not value my time and what I do? I'm just really confused. Um, I do volunteer work, but that's really presum presumptuous it's just kind of weird there there's a schnozzle it's a um i like it i like the schnozzle that looks pretty good to me what do you think nice nose job right hey look at that that's pretty good all right so now for the eyes i want to do eye brow bones right get some actual um texture so let's look at myself in the mirror how many how Pronounce your my brow bones. Pretty pronounced. I got a big old schnoz. I mean, it's very crooked, as you can see. Go over to the side. So I've got these lines here, too. That's just because I'm getting older. I don't have as much fat in my face. Um, so obviously, the fat stays in some areas and then it gets gaunt, a little bit more bony and a little bit hollower in other places. So I don't want it to look like me. I do kind of want it to have a longer chin. So let's go actually with the chin and then we'll do brow bones. 
make it a little bit wetter again. That water is just being really absorbed in, which is great. So let's give it a little bit more chin coming out from right underneath the lips. A little bit more prominent. But anyway, yeah, so it's just, you know, it's nice to be appreciated, but it's also nice to be paid for what I do professionally. Um, and here we go. So I'm excited about singing coming up and um, other concerts that I'll be doing soon, which is very exciting in the coming year. Because as I've mentioned in the past, COVID was a real, real, I mean, it was very difficult on everybody, don't get me wrong. The experience that I had as a musician during COVID was devastating. Um, it went from, and I, and I know a lot of other people had this experience in, in just sort of different ways. It went from me working, singing, uh, gigs, like, you know, working singer, uh, singing gigs, um, and being booked. I mean, regularly booked, you know, like singing gigs and having plans and being booked through, you know, basically. And so it happened in, I think it was March, that the whole shit hit the fan. Uh, I think I'm right there. And um, then it was just like, Oh my God. So as time went on, just in a couple of months, I went from being fully booked, uh, pretty much fully booked singing wise to nothing, not nothing. I mean, like literally nothing. Um, so you can imagine it's, it was basically like people, you know, you go into work one day and the next day they say, we don't need you. And you can probably imagine or relate to that very closely because that also happened with work for a month. Uh, they furloughed us for everybody in our office for a month while they tried to figure out the PPP loans and stuff like that. And thank, thank God and thank goodness for um, people with whom I work, who appreciated my work and hired me back just a month later. Um, it was just a weird time. We did a lot of camping as a result to try to like be like, okay, not the end of the world. How can we use the time? I'm suddenly retired without being retired. Uh, yeah, so you probably experienced that. Well, I'm pretty much guaranteed that everybody who is watching in some way, shape, or form experienced that, right? It was like, end of the world, everything stops, grind, 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 boom, you're done. Now what? Um, so with for me, for as a performer, it was literally, and all my friends who are performers, it was suddenly like, holy shit, I've never been without singing gigs you know, i've gone like short periods of time where i'm not singing a lot but it, and this all came from you know when i was saying that i've always had church jobs how far back do my eyebrows go let's bring it right around there push this down blend it up so that it's more of a there we go we're coming from the bone structures continuing down into the top of the eye no hard line and then there's more of an eye cavity now there that worked uh yeah so it was like i i you know it's it was kind of one of those reality checks too where i went oh my gosh so when was the last time that i didn't have any singing gigs like at all lined up and i couldn't actually remember a time um even like volunteer things or you know, I'm going to sing on a Christmas event, or I'm going to sing on a Hanukkah event, or I'm going to sing anywhere, retirement homes, all the stuff that I was doing, um, a lot of, that I've done for a very, very long time. Um, concerts in museums that were scheduled. Everything. Boom. Gone. Done. Basta. First time that I could remember that I did not have a gig first time in my life, basically my adult life. Um, it was the strangest thing, because then you go, well, shit, now what? And then I started working back at my job, and I thought, okay, this is great, but um, how am I gonna survive like emotionally when 
I don't have art in my life suddenly. I don't have music, which is for me a lifeblood. It's, you know, it's, it's the thing that kept me alive throughout high school. I mean, the people also kept me alive, but music really, my relation to music, Freddie Mercury and Queen, you know, it's like, are those things going away? What else is going away? This is, it was scary. It was very scary. It was scary for us all. It was annoying. It's so incredibly annoying, uh, as you all can relate, because it's like, well, this isn't cool, you stupid virus. I wasn't pissed with the CDC or anything like that. I, you know, it, I'm, I'm a little too realistic for, well, you know what? It's a freaking virus and it's a pandemic. People who are not understanding this and the reality of this and are so self-centered. And if you have a differing opinion, more power to you, but this is my opinion. But if you are blaming somehow a pandemic on individuals, you need to do a little reevaluation of reality. Uh, because, you know, yes, it was, it was handled poorly. Yes, they didn't know what the hell was going on because they're human and we're learning about it, but you know, I give people a lot more room, I think, than most people give themselves uh, to be human and to learn, uh, I guess, as an educator. But so anyway, so it was a weird experience. Just thought I'd share, uh, very, very weird. And um, the whole Zoom experience then, of course, you know, everybody's learning Zoom. And it was like, oh crap, what is this thing? And how do I use it? And then people were doing these brilliant things, thank goodness, for for kids and everything, where they were putting together these programs and the music and everything. All right, there we go. We've got more face, more prominent face. We've got an actual chin that comes out uh, and is more looking rather masculine. Um, and then, so what do I do with the lips? I'm going to make it wider, but not as totally pronounced. I'm at 37 minutes. So I'm going to leave it right here and then I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to apply just the rest of this in the next episode. Uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave the head here as it is developed wise. Smooth underneath now that I can see. And thank you for listening. I'm going to apply to the bottom here. We've got the inside finished. We've got a face on it that looks a little bit more like a prominent face and I really I'm very happy with it. This needs to be gooed up a little bit more and I don't want to go much longer. So I'm going to finish this up and then we'll say Auf Wiedersehen or Adieu to you and you and you. So I hope you, while I do this, I'm going to talk to you and wish you a wonderful day. I hope you um, give yourself lots of space as I say every time, but it never hurts to hear it again. We don't give ourselves enough space to grow, be the people that we need to be, and um, to not be so critical of ourselves and other people. Um, so try, make an effort to just be a little bit more understanding of others, less critical of others, less willing to jump on the bandwagon of um, criticism and judgment. Um, we don't need any more judgment in this world, that's for sure. Let people be who they are. If they're ding-dong merrily on high going along their business, you know, wish them, you know, I wish you well in your weirdness. I wish you well in your really what I see as dumb decisions, is what I'll often say. But you know what, for them, maybe they're not dumb decisions. Maybe they're decisions that need to be made, followed through on, and then learned from, right? Who are we to say? You know, yes, we can see a different way of doing things that may be better, that may be more productive, but um, just don't, you know, don't push your crap on me if you got crap. Your stuff is your own. Remember that. It doesn't need to be somebody else's. And remember that your own stuff, own it. You know, if it's yours, own it, honey. How can you become a better person if you don't own your own stuff? Recognize where you have room to grow and grow. If you don't see the problem, if 
you don't acknowledge that you need to grow in a certain area, you will never grow. It's not going to be a possibility. However, if you open yourself to that possibility by acknowledging that mm, I'm not so good at this, or I really would love to improve on that, or I suck at this, and, and instead of it being a judgmental thing, being a, I suck at this, so I'm gonna work on that. I'm not going to chastise myself for sucking at that. I am literally going to use it as a, well, I suck at this, so hey, here's an opportunity for me to get better at that. Let's see what I can learn from people around me, from situations, from the internet, from whatever, to get to be a better person, right? Doesn't that sound logical? Doesn't it sound easy? I mean, you just kind of go out and do that, search the internet and bingo, bingo, bongo, you are a better person, if only, right? So have a wonderful day. I'm gonna wrap this up now. And um, the only thing I'm gonna do off screen, I know I told you that I will never do anything off screen, but I'm just gonna apply the rest of this. So put more love out in the world. There's not enough love in the world. I'm gonna to try to get some of the cement off so that I don't mess up my phone. And um, say hello to your mama. Um, take a deep breath. Breathe it out. And now see where your headspace is. Do that throughout the day. All right? Have a wonderful day. Put more love out in the world. There's not enough of it. Thank you, Sir Elton John. And bye!